So I've been asked to do a video on why you don't use a ball hitch in recovery. Um, I watched a few videos already that other people have made. Um, Mad Max was a pretty good one, had a lot of good information on there. And then I seen a couple other ones that just had horrible information on it. Bad information, wrong content, wrong reasons why not to use ball hitch. One guy even said use crane chains because they're rated higher than regular chains. So let, let's just get into it and talk about a little bit of the safety. Um, why recovery guys like myself say no ball hitches. Um, why they fail. We'll do a little bit of math, a little bit of calculations. I'm going to show you a way to think about stuff when you're hooking up. So let's go. All right, so why do ball hitches fail? Where do they fail? And what affects them? And just a little bit of background. Right there is my rigging certification from a crane school. And then that is ring leader certification for rigging and prep for rotator <coughs> crane work. Two, two different places. So I'm not just uh, you know a hillbilly. I actually went to school for some of this stuff. So when guys like myself or anybody in the professional recovery field that know what they're talking about. And yes, I have to add that part because there's a lot of people that don't know what they're talking about. When we say do not pull on ball hitches, we're not talking about the ball. That's in a single shear. It's not a closed system. That is a failing point. But 99% of the failure is actually at this tube, not the ball hitch. And that's where I'm going to explain to you a mechanical advantage of a lever so you can understand and you can see why it's a failing point and you don't listen to certain people on YouTube that say, uh, you, failing ball hitches is a myth. I've been doing it for years and nobody else needs to die. If you look at a ball hitch right here, this section right here is a mechanical advantage point. It's going to create a twisting point when you're pulling from the ball. The longer this is, the more is being multiplied in the twisting force at the main, at the main shaft. This is going to be a class 2 lever right here. And they always break at the bottom. Even when if they put this gusset in here, that just prevents this from bending right here. But it still puts all the stress on the main shaft. So out of, I don't know, I've been doing recovery work for about 15 years. I've seen one ball snap off. And I've probably seen 20 shafts broken. That's just in the work that I'm doing. I'm sure you've seen hitches fail. I'm sure other people have seen hitches failed. And then this man died, you know, a couple weeks ago from a failing hitch. Um, it happens all the time. And it's because it's the wrong design. This is meant to hold a trailer that is rolling with no resistance. That's what this is for. It's a trailer ball. This is not a recovery piece of equipment. I don't understand why people can spend $100,000 on an off-road rig and they can't buy recovery equipment. I've seen my fair share of unsafe recovery attempts. I've seen people break front drive shafts. I've seen people have ch broken chains and straps on their vehicle. I've seen broken anchor ropes off of boats. So if you're looking at a ball hitch, you got the pin that goes inside the receiver. You got the main tube. It could be hollow, it could be solid. Then you have the drop hitch that comes down. Then you have the ball in there. You got a little bit of weld right here, a little bit of weld up on top, and weld down the sides, usually on both sides. All the way around this welding. Some of the bigger drop downs will have a gusset welded in here, but for basics, let's just use this diagram. Here is a class two lever that you would learn in kind of a crane course. So this is where it would be bending from. This resistance arm is usually like a load. So this would be like a wheelbarrow. 
This would be the dirt and wheelbarrow, and this would be the hand or the handles where you would pick up the wheelbarrow. How much force do you need to pick this up to lift that weight if it's tipping from that point? We're talking about hitches, we're not talking about wheelbarrows. So let me explain. It. Look at this hitch setup right here, and you're pulling from down here. This is actually your lever. It's going to be tipping it this way when you're pulling on. So this point up here at the top of this piece of steel, this point here is your tipping point. That's going to be your fulcrum. This weld right here at the bottom section, that's going to be what's holding this piece of steel back. So right here, this section is going to be considered the resistance because that is holding your steel to this bar. And then when you put a rope around right here, so this section of lever, this will be your effort. Don't mind my sloppy ride. So if you look at a ball hitch that starts breaking, it broke at the bottom and then works its way up. Why is that? Like I said, this is a lever. So when you pull on the ball hitch, it's going to bend this way. So what does that do? It concentrates all the pressure to this bottom weld. And that's very, very important to understand that you're concentrating all the pressure to the bottom second of the shaft. Now, if it was pulling straight down like this, it'd be putting equal pressure all the way around that weld. Or if it was like a factor 55 that was pulling from the dead center, it'd be pulling equal around the weld, around the whole shaft. And it would be transferring all the load to this pin. But when you're using a ball hitch, you have a lever which is multiplying your force. When you're using the fast factor 55 hitch with the soft shackle. When you pull on this, it pulls directly in line of the hitch, straight in line. There's no twisting action, there's no load multiplier. Everything is going to be pulling in line and putting the pressure on this pin. So like I'm saying, this is what I'm using. When you pull on it, it pulls directly in line, pulls on this pin. Here's another, another one. This one I think is made by X-Bull. This one here is a Factor 55. This is what I was using, and then I switched over to this one. This is solid steel. It's heavy as a mother right here. And this is out of aluminum, super light. Um, I like the soft shackle design. It eliminates uh, weak points. This has a shackle, which you know, typically is fine. I just prefer this setup. Um, if you get a shackle design, typically the hole in there has a sharp edge, so you can't use a soft shackle. You have to get one that has a rounded edge like this one. But when you're pulling on this one, you're pulling straight in line. It puts all the pressure on this pin. If you pull on this one, it pulls directly in line and pulls directly on that same pin. Now, I, some guy on YouTube, I won't mention any names yesterday, said it doesn't matter what size pin you have in there, or who, what kind of pin, blah, blah, blah. Or just take the receiver out and just use the pin. All of that is bad information. I might make a whole nother video on hitch pins, but this one made by Factor 55 is 303 stainless, it's a 5 8 diameter, has a shear strength around 50,000 pounds. Now that's a shear strength when this is in the receiver and it's a tight fit with that pin in there. If you take this receiver out and put that pin in that hitch, it is no longer rated for 50,000 pounds. So people telling you to take this out and use the pin is incorrect. All you're going to do is break this pin and have a strap flying at you. How much force is being multiplied by the drop hitch? That's the trick question. The shorter the ball hitch, the shorter the lever, the less amount is being multiplied. Longer the hitch, the bigger the lever, and the more it's being multiplied. You have to look at it as putting a cheater bar or a pipe onto a ratchet or pipe wrench. 
The longer the pipe, the easier it is to break something loose that comes in effect with ball hitches. Right, so let's continue talking about the hitches. So remember this is a 10 inch drop with a ball. How much force are we putting at this point if you're pulling from the ball? So to calculate out this lever, you need A over B, which is pivot, this point, to the resistance, and then pivot, this point, to where you're pulling from. Okay, so in this, it's going to be 2 over 10 because it's a 10 inch drop. Simplify that down, it's 1 over 5. So whatever force you're putting here is being multiplied by 5 to equal the pressure here. So if you're putting 6,000 pounds of force on this ball, which is within the rating, you're putting 30,000 pounds of twisting force at this weld point. I apologize. It's, so this information is correct, A and B. But it's supposed to be B over A. I know somebody's going to complain. So it would be 10 over 2, 5 to 1. I mean, I knew what it meant, but thus it might confuse some of you guys. So it's a 5 to 1 lever. Now, I am willing to bet my entire paycheck that he put more than 6,000 pounds of pressure on that ball when he was trying to yank out that 9,000 pound diesel that was stuck. Um, but this is the reason why ball hitches are failing and why we say do not use a ball hitch because of the lever action of the hitch design. We're not talking about the ball itself. Um, that is in a single shear, but I've only seen one ball fail in 15 years and I've seen about 20 hitches fail. Um, and that's because it's being multiplied through the lever and it's breaking at the main shaft. That's typically where they're always failing. So on this design here with a gusset, okay, so now you're not putting a stress here, you're putting it here. It's still a stress point. You're still putting all the pressure right here. And it's gonna break right here. Just like, I'm gonna put a picture of where their hitch failed. It failed right here. Now maybe if this was a solid tube, or his was a solid tube, it might not have broken right there. But most of them are hollow, like this. And it creates a weak point right there. I hope this video clears some stuff up on why we're saying not to use a ball hitch. A um, little bit of a mechanical advantage there. Um, why it's shearing where it does. Um, yep, yeah, hopefully it helps. If you have any questions, Put a comment down below i might do a whole another video on hitch pins because i've recently because of you know this death in the off-road market here um i've seen a lot of videos come out about hitch pins and a lot of that information is also incorrect um they're talking about different style hitch pins just put a bolt in there so on and so forth but just a little bit of information a grade two hitch pin will have a sh double shear strength around 27,000. A grade eight hitch pin will have a shear strength around 66,000. And then the factor 55 is 303 stainless, which will hold up to an impact or a shock load much better than the grade eight. That has a shear strength right around 50,000 pounds. So just the material alone makes a huge difference on the hitch pin itself. So I might have to do a whole nother video on hitch pins. And then there's people out there telling you take the hitch out and just put the strap on the pin. That's creating a bending area and a lever point and will dramatically decrease the capability of that pin majorly. So there's a lot of bad information flowing around and I just want to make sure you guys are staying safe and getting the right information. And I want everybody to go home at the end of the day. We don't need no more deaths in the off-road community.